The robot that I'm covering in this series is a sumo robot and it's supposed to drive on a platform, a black platform with a surrounding white edge border. And my sumo robot has four line sensors, one in each corner in order to detect this surrounding border. And they are there to make sure that my robot doesn't drive out of uh, the platform accidentally by itself. And in this video, I'm going to write the driver to take the input from these sensors. And the way these sensors work is quite simple. They emit a light signal and then they measure the light that is reflected back. And then they have an output pin that gives the corresponding voltage output and the voltage output is going to be different depending on the uh, color of the surface so in this case since the uh, smallboard platform is mostly black uh, that's going to give one value and then the surrounding white edge border is going to give another value which means it's going to be easy for me to detect whether my sumo robot is above the white line and I connect this voltage pin to one of the pins on my microcontroller and I can configure the ADC uh, peripheral, the analog to digital converter peripheral to translate the analog value into a digital value. And as I usually do, I'm going to divide my code into multiple layers. So at the bottom, I'm going to have the ADC driver, and this is going to be the code that configures the, uh, or sets up the ADC peripheral. And above this layer, I'm going to have a thin layer called the same as the line sensor, so QRE1113. And this is just going to be a simple layer, uh, which is mostly going to be there to name the individual voltages. So, so instead of say saying ADC channel one, I can say uh, voltage front left, for example. And then above this, I'm going to have uh, an application layer that translates the individual voltages to line positions. So for example, if uh, the voltages in the front indicates that they are above the white line, I can translate this into the line position, which is going to be line front. And similarly, if the front left sensor indicates with its voltage that it's above the white line, then I can say line front left. So this layer is just going to return a range of different values depending on where the line is located. So let's begin by creating a new local Git branch. And I'm just going to call this feature uh, line sensors. And then I can begin by creating the files for the ADC driver. And these are going to be located under the drivers directory. Yep. And then I can go ahead and open these files. Starting with the header file. So the interface here is going to be quite simple. I'm just going to have two functions, uh, one function to initialize the ADC driver, and then a second function to retrieve the latest channel values. And this function is going to take a, an argument uh, because the caller is going to have to pass its own struct that's going to contain the return channel values. And I'm going to create a new type for this. So it's going to be a type def. And this type def is used here for uh, to make the code more readable. Count. And the channel count is eight because on my microcontroller, the MSP413, uh, there are in total eight uh, pins on the microcontroller that supports uh, ADC. Uh, so, and these, these are all located on the first port. So from uh, uh, port uh, one, uh, pin zero to pin seven. I'm not going to use all of these channels because I only have four line sensors, so I only need to use four of the ADC pins. But to simplify the code, I'm still going to have an array here that can return all of the eight values, even though I'm not going to return all eight values. And then I also have to include stdint, since I'm using the type uint16 underscore t here. Uh, I also have to add this uh, ADC uh, implementation file to my make file, so that it's built as part of my project. that and and I can also add a comment on top of my header file dot C yeah so now I'm going to head over to the IO file uh, the file that contains my driver for uh, the IO, IO pins or the configuration of all the IO pins which I've shown in a previous video and I'm going to create a separate uh, uh, array in this file that's going to hold the pins that I want to use as ADC pins 
gonna add it here. And this is just going to be a static constant array since it's just supposed to be accessible within this uh, implementation file. And I'm not going to change it and that's why I'm making it constant. And since I don't have that many pins available on uh, the launchpad uh, development board I'm using uh, for the first couple of videos in this video series, uh, I'm just going to, uh, for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use one pin on the launchpad, but then I'm obviously going to use all four when I move over to the actual robot. And then I'm going to add two additional functions. One function to retrieve the array that I just defined. And this is just going to return the pointer to this array, but also give me the size of the array. Uh, it's not strictly necessary for me to have the array in this file. I could have just as well had it inside the ADC driver, but I think it just makes a little bit more sense to keep it next to the rest of the IO configuration. And then I will have a second function to return the uh, channel index of a corresponding pin. And I'm going to have an assert here to make sure that the past pin is part of uh, port 1, since no pins on the other ports support ADC. And then I can just use the existing uh, pin index function that I created in an earlier video. And then I also need to add this to the header file. And for this video or for the launch pad, I will assign uh, pin three of port one to uh, uh, one of the line sensors or one of the pins on one of the line sensors. So I will replace this with IO line detect from left. Go back to the implementation file and also make sure that it's configured appropriately. Remove that from here and then left. And I will create a separate define macro to hold the ADC pin configuration. I'm going to call that ADC config. And I'm going to define that similar to how I've defined the unused config. Uh, it doesn't really matter which configuration I use here since the ADC peripheral is going to overwrite the configuration. So I'm just going to leave this as uh, an input pin uh, with uh, no pull up or pull down resistor. Move this comment to above here. And I can replace this as well. So then I can head into the implementation file for the ADC driver and start implementing the ADC driver. And for the ADC peripheral uh, on my MSP430, uh, which is called ADC10, because it's a 10-bit uh, ADC, it has quite a lot of uh, configurations you can do. And I won't cover all of the details in this video. But the overall strategy I'm going to use for the ADC in this project is that I'm going to set up the peripheral to sample a sequence of channels and then to write these, uh, the sampled values to a given address in the memory. And once that's done, I'm going to have it uh, generate an interrupt uh, so that I can read the values from this uh, memory and copy it into another location in memory uh, that will act kind of like a cache, which I will then use to retrieve the values inside uh, my application. And once the values have been copied to the cache, I will then have uh, the interrupt service routine start the next sequence of uh, samplings, which means that uh, my ADC driver is going to be sampling the channels uh, all the time, basically. And then uh, whenever my application wants to retrieve the values, it's going to get the latest values from the cache. And since my application is going to run in a big while loop or a super loop uh, that's going to maybe iterate 10 or something times per second, it's not going to be super important uh, for this ADC driver to run very fast. And as such, I'm going to configure it to use a slower internal clock called A clock, 
because this is going to put less load on the CPU because I'm going to have uh, fewer interrupts. And when copying the values uh, from the samples, I'm going to be using DMA, direct memory access, which is also going to reduce the load on the CPU. So let's now write to the individual registers of the ADC peripheral to set up this strategy. So the first thing I'm going to do is retrieve the ADC pins from the IO interface. And I'm going to store these in uh, separate variables here so that I only need to retrieve them once and access them from uh, other functions as well. And the registers I'm going to write to now are all described inside the datasheet. And I've read this datasheet very closely to be able to understand how to configure this ADC peripheral. And that's something that you always have to do when you configure a particular peripheral of a microcontroller. You have to read the datasheet to understand how you need to set it up. And I actually think uh, this ADC peripheral is one of the more advanced peripherals to configure, uh, or at least the one that I'm configuring in this project. Because I've had some issues uh, getting the configuration right here. Okay, so... First, I write to the ADC 10 CTL1 register, and this register kind of contains the overall configuration for the peripheral. So first, I set the clock divider to its uh, largest value uh, to uh, make the clock as slow as uh, possible. And the consec value, or the consec bits, determines the mode the ADC runs in, whether it's going to sample a single channel or a sequence of channels, basically. And as I, as I explained before, I'm going to have the ADC sample a sequence of channels. So that's why I'm using consec1 here. And the next value, uh, SHS, selects how the ADC should be started or what's going to trigger the next um, sampling sequence. And I want to do this manually because I want to start it from the interrupt service routine. So that's why I'm selecting uh, zero here. Because then I can set uh, the ADC 10 start conversion bit to start the next conversion. And finally, I select the clock source. And this particular value selects a clock as clock source. And finally, uh, the inch value or the inch bits selects uh, which uh, channels to sample. And the value you write to these bits is going to depend on the uh, mode you use. So for example, if you're just, uh, sampling a single channel, you're just going to write the single channel you want to sample here. But since I'm sampling a sequence of channels, I, I have to use the last channel in the sequence. And I'm going to write some additional code above uh, this line to uh, compute this channel. And then I'm going to write to ADC10 uh, control zero. And similarly, this configures some other aspects of the ADC peripheral. ADC10 on enables the peripheral. SREF sets the voltage references, basically the VCC and ground. This can also be configured to other values uh, depending on the voltage references you want to use. Sometimes uh, your application may require your ADC to be very precise and accurate, and then you might want to use a dedicated uh, voltage reference that is uh, that has less noise, but that's not something I'm doing uh, in this application. And ADC 10 SHT sets the sample and hold time. And this is basically how much time the ADC spends on sampling each value, uh, or I think that's uh, what it does. And I'm just basically setting the largest value here. And I think this is going to give me more accurate readings. And the next value sets uh, multiple sample conversions which basically uh, configures the ADC to, um, do, uh, to uh, sample and convert all of the values of the sequence of channels uh, being sampled. And finally, ADC 10 IE enables interrupts. And next I need to write to ADC 10 AE0, uh, which is the register you write to to enable the corresponding ADC pins. And similar to uh, the inch value here, I'm going to have code up here to compute the bits that I need to set based on the channels that I've assigned to ADC. And this is what's going to ensure that the ADC peripheral overwrites the pin configuration for the ADC pins. And then I'm going to configure something called the data transfer controller, 
Which is basically the hardware component that provides the DMA functionality for the ADC peripheral on the MSB430. And this is what's going to allow the ADC to write the sampled values of the individual uh, channels to a dedicated location in memory without involving the CPU. Because if I didn't use this uh, transfer controller, I would have to interrupt after each channel had been uh, sampled and transferred the value manually using the CPU. Uh, but now I can instead wait for all of the channels to be sampled before involving the CPU. So this is just go overall going to be more efficient. Uh, but one more important detail when you sample a sequence of channels using this ADC peripheral is that it only supports sampling channels contiguously, which means that even if you, for example, just want to sample channel 1, 2 and 5, uh, you, you will have to go through all channels from 5 all the way down to 0. This is a limitation in the hardware and there is no way around it. And you just need to make sure that you account for it in the configuration. So the channel count is going to be uh, the last channel index uh, incremented by 1. And I'm also going to compute the last index or last channel index up here. And then the data transfer controller has some um, corresponding registers you need to write to to um, configure it. And this ADC 10 SA sets the address the values should be written to. And I will have an array allocated for this. And I'm going to make this volatile since it's touched by the hardware and I don't want my compiler to optimize it away. And I explicitly need to cast the pointer value to uh, a 16-bit integer here. Otherwise, my compiler is going to complain about that, even though the uh, pointer value is a 16-bit value on the MSB430. And then after the configuration is done, I'm going to start the first uh, sampling and conversion, which I'm going to have a separate function for. And then I can write the code to compute these uh, values here. And I'm just going to iterate over the pins inside this uh, ADC pin array that I defined inside the IU code. And for each uh, pin, I can get the corresponding bit value by just uh, shifting the value one with the pin index. And then I will set uh, this uh, corresponding bit inside this ADC 10 AE uh, register. And then I can keep track of the last index with a simple if statement. And then the inch value is just going to be the last index. But I also need to shift it to make sure that the correct uh, bits of uh, this register is set. So that's going to be shift by 12. So that's essentially it for the configuration. So then I can add the implementation for the interrupt uh, service routine. And here I'm just going to copy the values that uh, uh, data transfer controller has written to memory to another location in memory. And the reason I'm doing this is because I want, to, I want the application to be able to retrieve the values safely so that it doesn't touch the same array as the data transfer controller is touching. And to make this safe, I'm also going to have the application disable interrupts while retrieving the values from this second array. So I'm going to define this here. Hash. And the data transfer controller or the ADC peripheral is going to sample the channels from the last index to index zero. So I just need to make sure that I retrieve the values in opposite order when I assign the values to the cache array here. Like this. And then once it has copied all of the values, it can then start the next sequence of uh, sampling. Like that. And finally, I can implement a function that the application is going to use to retrieve the values from this cached array. And in this function, I'm just looping over the pins that are actually assigned as ADC and then copy the values from the cache array for these corresponding pins. 
And I also need to disable interrupts here so that I don't get an interrupt in the middle of uh, this for loop. And I'm going to disable the interrupts globally here and not just for the ADC peripheral because I've had some issues when only disabling the interrupts for the ADC peripheral. I haven't been able to figure out why, so I'm just doing this kind of as a workaround here. So let's now see if this code compiles. Let's add some includes. Okay, so I'm getting a bunch of compilation errors. So let's just go through these. So first of all, it complains about are you unused one. Uh, yeah, so I should remove that since I've replaced that now. Yeah, I need a semicolon here. Then I also need to include things. Oh yeah, I should make this global instead. This needs to be const. Now it compiles. So let's also create a test function to test that it works. So I'm just going to iterate the ADC uh, values and print them to the console. Busy wait to ensure I only print them once a second. And I also need to include ADC at the top. Then I can build this. Oh, yeah. Okay, so to test this, then I can connect my launch pad to my computer. and flash the code. I can open the terminal. Okay, so it doesn't seem to work as I expect it to. So let me just debug why it doesn't work. Okay, now I know why it didn't work. I had missed three uh, things. First of all, this inch variable should be a 16-bit value. Since this register is a 16-bit register and I'm shifting uh, this value beyond uh, the eight uh, bits. And then this should be IUE and not uint8. And most importantly, I forgot to uh, configure the uh, A clock. Uh, so what I need to do when I initialize the microcontroller is to set the uh, source for the A clock, which is going to be uh, this uh, low frequency oscillator, which is internal to uh, this microcontroller. And I can set this by writing this value to this register. So now if I build and flash this again, it should work. Now since I'm on the launch pad and I've only set up to use a single pin and this is going to cor correspond to channel three. So I'm just going to uh, verify that this works by looking at the value on channel three. Okay, so here I have this jumper wire connected to pin uh, three of port one. And if I connect this to uh, uh, high, so 3.3, I read value, yeah, almost uh, uh, 1023. And then if I connect this to ground instead, I should expect to read uh, 
some value close to zero. Yeah, and I do. So it seems to be working. Yeah. So now I can go ahead and format this. CPP check and commit the code. Like this. I should also run all of the tests. Or build all of the tests. Yeah, that works as well. And then I can go ahead and push this. Make sure that it passes CI before I move on to the next commit. Open a pull request. It did not pass CI, so let's see why it didn't. Oh yeah, I need to remove this value from here. Now if I update this, it should work. It's weird because I should catch this error when I build all of the tests, but I guess there is something wrong with my make file uh, that makes it so that I don't rebuild all of the files uh, when they change. Okay, so now it passed CI. So let's move on to the next commit. And I'm going to begin by creating the files. We see. And this is going to be a much simpler driver because the bulk of the work has already been done inside the ADC driver. The first a function to initialize the driver. Then a function to get the voltages. It's going to be a struct, which I'm also going to define inside the header. A small comment on and then inside the implementation file and this is just going to call a DC init Call the function we created inside the ADC driver. And then I can assign the corresponding values to the struct that I'm returning. And here I'm going to use the IO function that takes uh, the IO pin and gives me the corresponding index, basically the channel index. Right. I also need to make sure that I only get the, uh, all of the values for the actual robot since I haven't defined the other pins for the launchpad, like that. And I also have to add 
the ADC, uh, the QRE implementation file to my make file. So let's see if this builds now. Yes, like this. Nope. Probably big, so I forgot some defines. Yeah, and some semicolons. And also need to include drivers, ADCH. Now it builds. So let's go ahead and add a test function as well. And similarly, I'm just going to print the values here as well. So now I can build this, do not build. Uh, oh, ah, need a comma. So let's try this as well. So now I get an assert. Okay, so cleaning the project and building it again made it work. So I definitely have some bug inside my make file that I have to resolve, but I'm not going to do that in this video. Okay, so let's now do the same test as before. If I pull the pin low by connecting it to ground, I read a low voltage value close to zero. And then if I pull it high to 3.3, I read a high voltage value close to 1023. So it seems to be working. Good, then I can go ahead and commit this code as well. Well, format first, cpp check, Maybe make clean, then uh, tools, build test, and then I can go ahead and commit the code. that push this as well and make sure that it passes CI yeah and it passed so let's now move on to the final uh, part of the code which is going to be the application layer. So once again, I'm going to create two new files. Line.h be inside here. This is also going to have two functions, one initialization function and one function to get the position of the line. And then I'm going to have an enum uh, naming the different positions. So based on the different um, voltages, we're going to get a range of different uh, possible positions for the line. So it can be in the front, the back, left, right, front, right, front, left, diagonal left and diagonal right and so on. Uh, and then inside the implementation file, or let's just go to the make file quickly and add it to here. 
then in the implementation file, first gonna include app line h, and then the initialization function is going to be very simple. Just going to call query one one three in it. I'm also going to add a comment on top of this file. And then for the second function, I will have a big if else uh, statement to go through all of the retrieve voltages and turn them or translate them into a line position. So first I'm going to get the voltages and then I'm going to have four booleans uh, that determines whether a single line detector has uh, detected a line. And for this, I'm go just going to uh, define a threshold value. And I'm going to set this to value 700. And this is just based on my own experimentation. Uh, it makes sense to have this threshold to um, distinguish between the black platform and the white line. I'll do this for all of the sensors. And then it's just a matter of going through all of the cases. So if both front left and front right is detected, I return line front. And if front left and back left, I return line left. And then I just do this for all of the other cases. And if no, nothing is detected, I return line none. And then I can add a test function for this as well. But let's clean and then build. So I got some errors. Need a closing bracket. It include S3 bool and include common start handler page. Oops, they should be named line get. There we have something. So let's flash and test it. So now I'm going to hook up one of these line sensors and actually show that I get a different value when I hold it over a white compared to a black surface. And it has uh, three pins. One is connected to uh, VCC and uh, the other one is connected to ground. And then the third one is the input pin, which I connect to the pin three of port one in this case, since that's the pin I'm using for ADC. So if I open the terminal now, it's giving me value four when I don't have anything in front of the sensor and four is going to correspond to line right. So zero, one, two, three, four. And then let's just see if I hold something with white color above it. So let's say for example, I hold this over it, we should see a different value. Yeah, so now we get line one instead. So if I hold something black over it, I think it's going to just give me the same value as not having anything else over it. Yeah, so it gives, still gives me line four. And then if I take something else that's white, maybe this cable for example. I get line one again. So it seems to be working. And the reason I'm not getting this value here, which is uh, value six, I think, is because uh, even though this is the front left sensor and that's the only one detecting anything right now, uh, since I'm not using the other uh, 
sensors here. Uh, these voltages are going to be zero, so it's going to be as if all of these sensors are detecting the line. But to confirm that it works, it's just enough to see that when I hold something white over it, I get a different value compared to if I hold something black over it. Okay, so now that I've confirmed that this works, I can commit this code as well. After I've formatted it, run CPP check. And built all stuff. That. And then I can push this as well. And look to see that it passes the eye. Yeah, and it passed. So let's go ahead and merge the pull request. That was all code I was going to write in this video. So now I have the implementation in place uh, for or that's needed to, uh, for this robot to detect the uh, line on all of these four sensors. And I will, of course, double check and make sure that it works when we bring the code onto this actual robot later on in this video series. So thanks for watching and see you in the next video.